Okay, hello, welcome. It is the final match, perhaps, <laughs> of the final day of sumo for the entire year and the final day of the Fukuoka Basho, uh, the November tournament. And we have a Mongolian Yokozuna clash, as we always do on the final match of the final day, but this one is for all the marbles, as it were. Kakiru is at 12 and 2, as you can see there. Hakuho is at 13 and 1. So Hakuho wins, it's all over. He gets his 32nd Emperor's Cup and goes one ahead of Chiono Fuji and ties Taiho for the all time on the list. And the next time he wins an Emperor's Cup, which will come in 2015, uh, he will be number one all time on that list. Kaku, on the other hand, has to beat Hakuho here in regulation to give him a 13 and 2 record. Uh, to match the two losses that he currently has, and then uh, he would force a playoff. They would have to fight. They'd go back into the dressing room, uh, get their hair done a little bit again, and you know there'd be a about a five-minute pause, and that would be a separate video. If that happens, I make that a separate video. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that, uh, and they would fight again for the championship. So we'll see how that goes. Um, other updates. I think I've got you covered in the other videos. Watch the Haramafuji Kisenosato video, Aoyama video. You'll get all the action from earlier in the day. Um, it's been a good tournament. There's been some good excitement. Uh, we've got Sekewakes staying where they are, which is nice. Aoyama and Ichinojo both performing well. Uh, two pretty disastrous Komosubi performances, but that's okay. Um, that happens at that rank and uh, opening it up for some new people to come in um, in January. And uh, we have some uh, pretty bad Ozeki performances, uh, so we'll have to see how they respond to that, and they'll both be Katoban. I'm talking, of course, Guedo and Kojusho Giku, uh, and see how they respond in January to uh, perhaps uh, the, the specter of demotion hanging over their heads. And, of course, Kakiru here has a chance to win his first you show his first championship as a Yokozuna and kind of cement his uh, place at the rank, you know, saying, look, I deserve to be here. Look, I just won a championship against a very strong Hakuho who's only lost one bout this whole tournament. Uh, if you're interested in the Ozeki t-shirt, here's my last chance to mention it. I'll put a link down in the comments. Um, I set the goal of 30. I wanted to sell 30 shirts, and we just passed that this morning. So there's still time, though. You can still order one. It'll be up for about another four days over at teespring.com. So if you want an Ozeki shirt for yourself or for a gift, go over there and, and order one up. I appreciate it. helps the channel out. Okay, here we go. Hakuho Kakuru. Enjoy this one. He's got to keep Hakuho, Hakuho's left hand off that washing. Okay. Hakuho, we know exactly what he's got to do to win. Oh! Amazing. Record that could not be touched has been reached. I mean, these last three days, I've uh, seen Hakuro with more determination, more intensity in his symbol, I think. And he got the job done. I think that was Hiro san over Makarochi Rikishi from uh, Mongolia, Miyagi no Bear. The amazing statistic about Hakuho and Fukuoka is from 2007 when he became Yokozuna, so November of 2007 until November of 2012, he won in Fukuoka, he won the Basho in Fukuoka six times in a row, and didn't win it last year uh, for the first time, like I said, in six years, and now has won it again, so uh, seven of the last eight years in Fukuoka, this man has held the cup. So it's very rare 
for another Rikishi, at least in, in modern, uh, recent sumo, to win in Fukuoka. And, and here again, uh, he stepped up and he, he's won here. So, you know, what a year for him. 2014, he won five of the six tournaments. Um, you know, the only one he lost was in March when uh, Kakuru won the tournament to help him get promoted to Yokozuna. But, uh, you know, 14-1 and one with a playoff victory in January, 14-1 and one win in uh, May, 13-2 and two win in July in Nagoya, 14-1 and one victory last time uh, in September, and now a 14-1 and one here in November. I mean, just dominating the year 2014, no doubt. And uh, the only only anomaly for him, really, is uh, other than 2012, I think. No, I guess it's it's not that... Uh, okay, no, I'll take that back. Uh, he didn't get his Ensho Yu show this year. He didn't get a 15-0. and 0. He got two of them in 2013. He didn't get any in 2012, which was the year he won the least amount of tournaments as an o o Yokozuni. He only won twice in 2012. Um, in 2011, he didn't get his Ensho Yu show. So, but every other year, I think, as a, as a Yokozuni, he has. Uh, well, I guess 20, 2007, he got his Ensho Yu show, but he was an Ozeki. That was on his way to Yokozuna. So anyway, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, athlete and, and a, a great Yokozuna. Um, and, uh, you know, Kakiru, what can you say? You know, he, he put up the good fight, had his chance, and uh, just, uh, you know... In, in the last couple matches, in the end here, we're going to see the replay. Uh, just couldn't quite, you know, keep going. Even when he had uh, when he had the advantage, and he uh, was, you know, ahead of Hakuho after Hakuho had lost to Takiyasu. Um, you know, he still managed to lose a couple, but that's what it takes to win an Emperor's Cup. You know, it's it's not a week long tournament. It's not even a ten day tournament. It's a fifteen day tournament, and uh, you know, to get 14 out of 15, you know, to win 14 days out of 15, you know, is it's just day after day consistency and dominance, and and uh, you know, Hakuho has just been amazed, amazing at that. Uh, so, as we see the replay here, so uh, yeah, good year for Sumo, I think. Uh, 2014, we had some interesting, uh, you know, promotions. We had some interesting guys, uh, you know, come close. Uh, Kiseno Sato's had, you know, his brushes with it, and, you know, will he ever step up and really fulfill the promise that all the Japanese fans really had hoped for him? Uh, we've had Endo come up and sort of flame out and now come back a little bit strong here at the end of the year with a 10-5. and five. We've had the arrival of Ichinojo, um, you know, Goedo becoming an Ozeki, uh, Kakiru becoming a Yokozuna. So, uh, yeah, I think we have an interesting year ahead of Sumo, of course, January, man, uh, they put up a they put up a graph. How many days in all ninety days of sumo uh, did whatever arena they were in, Tokyo or Nagoya, or Osaka? How many days did they sell out? And two years ago, in twenty twelve, like thirty eight of the ninety days were sellouts. And then last year that went up to about forty five. And this year I think they said they were up to about fifty three. So 53 of the 90 days were sellouts. And that just shows you that the Japanese fans are coming around and they're interested in sumo again and they're going to see sumo. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can build on that and uh, have a really good year next year. And, uh, and, you know, and, you know, the sport will just keep on keeping on and uh, getting more and more popular. I plan on doing my channel and uh, hopefully you guys will come back. I hope you appreciated the... Uh, the coverage this time, and uh, I thank you for watching, commenting, thumbing up, all of the good stuff that you guys do, and uh, uh, thanks a lot. Have a good New Year's and a holiday season, and I'll see you again in January. Okay, peace. Congrats to Hakuho.